Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at and testing out the Intel Arc A770 Phantom Gaming 16GB Overclock version from ASRock. If you're familiar with the Intel Arc series of GPUs, you know that Intel has really been working on driver updates to improve performance across the board with all kinds of games, and recently we got a really nice one in August. Intel is claiming that we can see up to a 19% increase in frame rates with DirectX 11 games, and from what I've tested so far, yeah, I mean, these driver updates have been pumping out, and a lot of them have made a big difference in DX9 and DirectX 11 gaming. At the time I'm making this video, you can pick up the ASRock Phantom Gaming A770 8GB model for around $249, and the 16GB model, the one we're going to be taking a look at in this video, is $299, so they're very competitively priced when you compare it to the others on the market right now. And I'm a huge fan of these ARC GPUs. You know, Intel does have kind of a lot to gain here with driver updates. A lot of the other manufacturers have drivers kind of fleshed out. We'll see a little bit of an increase here and there. But from launch, when it comes to these ARC GPUs, Something like CSGO, we're seeing around a 43% increase in performance gains from the original driver to the one that's out right now. Obviously, ASRock has slapped a pretty beefy cooler on this A770. This is their Phantom Gaming 3X cooling system, so we've got those triple fans. This also utilizes their ultra-fit heat pipe system, copper base, and high-density metal welding to improve heat dissipation. I'll tell you right now, this thing running at full boat, 100% GPU load, still super quiet. These fans don't have to spin up that much to keep it nice and chilly, and I've never seen it hit thermal throttle. And when it comes to I.O., this Intel A77 has three display ports. These are 2.0, and we've got one HDMI 2.1 port. And of course, we do need to send a little extra power to the A77 to get it up and running, so this is going to be handled by two 8-pin PCIe connectors. They recommend up to a 700 watt power supply with this, and that's really going to depend on the CPU you opt to use with your build. Now, when it comes to the overall specifications of the Intel Arc A770, remember this is the ASRock Phantom Gaming 16GB Overclock Edition. This is PCIe 4.0. We get 16GB of GDDR6 running at a 256 bus. Remember, they also offer an 8GB model, which will come in a bit cheaper. Base core clock here is 2200 MHz with a boost clock up to 2400 MHz. It's got 512 Intel XMX engines, 512 Tensor cores, 32 RT cores, and it's rated at a 225 watt TDP in its stock configuration. So as for testing this card out, we do need to slam it inside of a PC, and I'm going to go a bit overkill with the CPU option here, just so we don't have any kind of CPU bottleneck. I want to see what this A770 can really do. So I'm going to be putting this inside of my main rig. I've got an i9-13900K. That's being cooled by 380mm Liquimax 3. We've got 32GB of DDR5 running at 6000MHz. 2TB NVMe SSD and an 850 watt power supply, and this is all inside of an Antec case. And as for the operating system, we've got Windows 11 Pro, fully updated, installed, ready to go. I just went with the vertical GPU mount, that's what I was using originally, so I just slapped this A770 in here, and I think it actually goes together quite well. Okay, so here we are, been up and running for a little while now, everything's working really well. As you can see, we've got that 13900K, definitely overkill for the A770, but we're not going to be working with any kind of CPU bottleneck here. And of course, the ARC A770, the 16 gigabyte version. With the ARC drivers, we do get the ARC control panel, and I'm on the latest beta right now. From here, we've got a lot that we can work with. We can set up custom profiles for each game. We've got our performance section. And there's actually a really nice little overlay that you can uh, put on screen at any time. Gives us all the information we need to know about the GPU itself. But we've also got some performance tuning right here. So we've got a GPU boost. And, you know, from the control panel, we can go up 100 megahertz. We can set the uh, voltage offset. And we can also up the power limit. So usually I set around 240. We've also got a temperature limit that we can adjust here and fan control. But with this giant cooler on the A770 from ASRock, it's not going to hit thermal throttle. I could turn these fans way down and still be totally fine with it, so I don't even need to mess with these. So obviously, we're going to be testing out a bunch of games here. And with these tests, I wanted to go to 1440p and see if we could do it with no resolution scale, be it XESS or FSR or anything like that. But the first thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on this. 
And the first one we have here is 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with the 76,586. And I am seeing a bit of a jump on the GPU when comparing older drivers on this A770. But the next one here is Fire Strike with a 29,761. And finally, we've got Time Spy with a 14,326. So compared to the last time I ran these, which I'll admit was actually on the 8 gigabyte model of the A770, I'm seeing around a 4% increase in benchmarks, and it's really not that much. I could probably run the same benchmarks on each system a few times and beat each other out by that much. So really, where the performance is going to be had with these newer ARC updates is real-world gaming. And the first one we have here is Street Fighter VI, where at 4K, very high. Personally, I like running my fighting games at 60 FPS, but if you wanted to do 120 on the A770, you could do it at 1440p. And when it comes to other fighting games, we've got more than enough GPU power here for 1440p and even 4K, depending on your settings. And even older fighting games like Street Fighter V are going to perform absolutely amazing on the ARC A770. Next up, we've got CSGO at 1440p, very high, and uh, this is where Intel really stresses that these driver updates help with performance, and it definitely shows here. Before this new update, with CSGO at 1440p, very high, I was getting an average of around 260 FPS on basically the same setup. But by the end of this run, I had an average of 328 FPS, which is a really nice increase. In fact, it's about a 22% increase in frame rate with CSGO. I also wanted to test out Horizon Zero Dawn at 1440p Ultra. I got an average of 68 FPS, so it's actually expecting a little more. And of course, with some resolution scaling, we could definitely get a lot more out of it at 1440p. Or, you know, if you don't mind running at 1080, this game still looks great 1080p Ultra. Next on the list, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales, 1440p, very high, and you're going to see the same kind of performance with Spider-Man Remastered, I mean, it's basically the same game running in the same engine. We got an average of 84 FPS with this at 1440p, really great performance, and you know, with this one, we don't have any kind of resolution scale. We can access XESS, Intel scaling option, but I didn't even have to turn it on for this. One game I always go back to with these ARC updates is God of War. When uh, ARC was initially released, performance here was not great at all. But right now we're at 1440p Ultra, and we're seeing kind of the same frame rate as the last uh, driver updates. I'm not very impressed with ARC in this game here. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but we got an average of 65 FPS. And the final game I wanted to Watch test it. here was Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 1440p Ultra with no resolution scale, and I'm only seeing around a 2 FPS increase from the older drivers, but it is playable, and I never saw it dip under 60 FPS, so locking this down at 1440p Ultra is definitely playable on the A770, or resolution scale is always a great way to up that frame rate. So overall, the Intel Arc A770 Phantom Gaming 16GB Overclock Edition is a great card in my opinion. I do love these Arc cards, and with all of these new driver updates that Intel's been throwing at us, we're seeing a nice boost in performance across the board, and I suspect we will see a bit more down the road. When it comes down to it, there's two other major players in the GPU market, and they've got their drivers kind of fleshed out across the board, like I mentioned. Intel does have a lot to gain from driver updates. They're still figuring everything out with these GPUs, but I'm really glad to see them keep on it. And right now, at the time of making this video, this is their most powerful Intel ARC card, the A770. Uh, we haven't seen anything above this just yet. They do have a few lower end tiers like the A50 and the A380. But you know, if you're looking for the maximum performance out of Intel ARC, then this is definitely one for you. Now, if you're interested in learning a little more about the Intel Arc A770 Phantom Gaming from ASRock, I will leave some links in the description. Again, they offer an 8GB model, which might be good for some people, especially if you want to save a little money. But we've also got the higher-end 16GB model, the one we took a look at here. I'll leave links for both in the description, and if there's anything else you want to see tested with these Intel Arc cards, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.